Merry Christmas Eve, sports fans. I must tell you the things we do for our friends. I'm only wearing this ridiculous hat for you, Dr. Bob. <laughs> to celebrate the holidays and crazy hats like this one, let's do the top 10 sports stories of the year with a Bronx net twist, several of which are lenses captured in 2018. Coming in at number 10, Will Power had won 33 open wheel races and an IndyCar Series championship going into the Indianapolis 500 this year, but not the Indy 500 itself. He had driven in 10 Indy 500s, leading 67 laps and finishing as high as second in 2015, but he had also crashed twice and finished out of the top 10 three times. So after he won the Indy 500 on Memorial Day weekend, he kept saying to himself, finally, 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 our Bronx State cameras captured it all. Here's Will Power at number 10. Talk about powering to the front. Penske's Will Power found victory lane at Pocono for the second straight year. He overcame numerous obstacles to get to the front in the ABC Supply 500 at Pocono Raceway, holding off lead points leader and teammate Joseph Newgarden to win the Verizon IndyCar Series race. Seriously means a lot. I mean, I, I love racing on ovals. To come back and win it again in a very different way this year uh, was uh, it was a crazy race, exciting for me, but yeah, it feels fantastic to be back to do back to back. The 36-year-old Australian defeated Newgarden by 0.5268 of a second to become the first IndyCar driver to post back-to-back -back wins on the three-turn oval in the event's 24-race history. That's the beauty of the 500 miles. You can go to the back with 60 to go and go to the front again. You know, especially if you're on a little different fuel strategy and, and you're fast, you can get right back to the front. So I think a lot of it's credit to Will and his team. Um, but I also think that's, that's the way 500 miles race. If you're fast, you can go from the back to the front. Lost in the buzz was another brilliant race from sophomore driver Alexander Rossi, who took home his second podium in the past three races with a third place finish. And I had a smile on my face the whole race. I mean, it's it's rare that you don't drive an Indy cars, especially the tracks is as awesome as this. So, um, you know, I had fun for, for the entire race and anytime you're leading, um, there's, there's some satisfaction. Speaking of powerful players, the Giants selected Bronx native Saquon Barkley, the former Penn State running back with the number two overall pick in the NFL draft, quickly making him a focus of their offense following a 3-13 season in which the team finished 21st in the NFL in total offense. The Giants considered Barkley a player who could help immediately. He's done nothing but go on to set the rushing record for a Giants rookie running back this year. Our Bronx that captured Barkley and in the days after the draft when he tossed out the ceremonial first pitch at Yankee. Yankee Stadium, Saquon, number nine. When they announced me, it was like Bronx native, and I, I was like, well, yeah, I am born from the Bronx, so it's kind of cool um, to, to throw a pitch, and just to throw a pitch for the Yankees uh, was, was even cooler. Um, like I said, I wasn't really huge on baseball growing up, but you, you know who the Yankees are. You know about the 27 World Championships, and you know how, how special this place is. And um, it's, it's, it's kind of like the role model and the standard in baseball in the same way I kind of view how the Giants hold themselves. And uh, you, you know this place. So to be able to come back, come here, and be able to throw a pitch, uh, hope, I wish it was, went a little better, um, but to throw a pitch uh, for the Yankees and be able to meet the Yankees players is, is an unbelievable accomplishment, something that um, I definitely remember for the rest of my life. But when you step out of your element, that's when it gets different. I actually was a little nervous. I didn't think I was going to be nervous because I was in college. I played in front of like 110,000 like on a weekly basis. So, uh, But when it's when it's not football uh, and, and it's baseball and you got to throw a pitch, um, and, and you I, on my way here I was watching all the videos of the 50 cents and all the – the bad ones, and I was just like, come on, like I do not want to be on ESPN, not top ten. Uh, but I think, I think it wasn't a great pitch, but I think I saved myself. Number eight goes to the first college basketball program to become the first number 16 seed to upset a number one. UMBC became the answer to a trivia question. Heading into 2018, 16 seeded teams were 0 and 135 against number one teams in the NCAA tournament. Now they're 1 and 135. UMBC pulled off the seemingly impossible, knocking off number one Virginia after a dominant performance. The Golden Retrievers may have lost their next game, but the underdogs won the hearts of many college basketball fans.
Justify did the same in horse racing, and for that, Justify justifies number seven on the top 10 sports stories of 2018. This generation of horse racing fans is spoiled. It took 37 years after a firm won the Triple Crown for American Pharaoh to win horse racing's most coveted achievement. Our Bronx Net cameras were there for that. It only took three years for Justify to give Bob Baffert his second Triple Crown horse. At this rate, people are going to start to think winning the Triple Crown is easy. Winning isn't usually easy when it comes to expansion teams. However, the Golden Knights proved otherwise. At number six, Las Vegas had the best inaugural season of any expansion team in history. Filled with rejects of the NHL, expansion teams are supposed to just shut up lose and be glad they even exist. The Golden Knights weren't going to accept that fate. Vegas played with a chip on its shoulder all season, riding solid goaltending and an efficient offense. The team won the Pacific Division and went on to the Stanley Cup final in 2018. Not bad for a group of players no one wanted. The UFC didn't really want Ronda Rousey anymore. The WWE well, they did want her. Ronda Rousey made her full-time WWE debut at WrestleMania 34 in 2018. She takes the fifth spot on my list. Many question whether Rousey leaving the UFC for the WWE was a good move. After stellar performances at WrestleMania 34 and Raw, there is no doubt she has found her new home. Coming in at number four, Kyler Murray is right at home on the baseball diamond and the gridiron. So much so, the two sports stars possibly following in the footsteps of all-time great Bo Jackson. He won the 2018 Heisman Trophy in December. Here's more. The only time Kyler Murray did not throw for 200 yards in a game was earlier this season in September against Army. The rest of the year, you could make a case for him being the best quarterback on the best offense in the country. And tonight, he's your 2018 Heisman winner. Murray. The two sports star who also plays baseball was drafted by the Oakland Athletics this past June, has been named the country's top college football player in what could be his final season playing the sport. This means back-to-back -back Heisman winners for Oklahoma after last year with Baker Mayfield. Murray, who threw for over 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns for Oklahoma this season, won the Heisman on Saturday night in Times Square, beating out fellow quarterbacks Tua Tagovailoa of Alabama and Dwayne Haskins of Ohio State. This is something I've dreamed of. My whole life, uh, you know, I felt like a lot of hard work uh, has been put into this, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm not here if it's not for um, God, my teammates, my coaches, my family. So um, it, it hasn't sunken in yet, but uh, this is, this is uh, crazy. Oklahoma coach Lincoln Riley has gotten used to coming to New York this time of year. This is certainly a team award, and it's very appropriate as he named his offensive lineman, went through the other uh, other players, all the other staff members, everybody that was involved to help it come to this. That's that's who it's about tonight. Back to back quarterbacks. I don't think that's ever happened. Uh, so no doubt, but it's uh, tonight's tonight's about Kyler. The season has been special uh, with my teammates. Uh, it's it's been everything I dreamed of, uh, and to to you know represent them up here is uh, is special. Kyler edged Tua Tagovailoa for the Heisman, but Tua takes the number three spot on my list along with Alabama for their showing in the national championship game to kickstart the year. Alabama won an overtime thriller to claim the NCAA national championship. Jalen Hurts led the Alabama offense for the entire year, carving up defenses with his legs and his arm. So when head coach Nick Saban subbed him out midway through the national championship game, many heads were scratched. However, he showed why he is genius and it should never be questioned that genius, of course. Freshman backup quarterback Tua Tagovailoa sparked the offense with well-timed runs and daring passes, including an overtime bomb that won the Crimson Tide's 17th official national title. Never doubt St. Nick. Yes, indeed, that was the story on the NFL Gridiron 2, where St. Nick and the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl. Philadelphia had plenty of success in basketball, hockey, and baseball, but none of that means anything in a football town. With, with Eagle star quarterback Carson Wentz out late in the season, it was the backup coming up huge in the playoffs. Nick Foles completed 72.6% of his passes for 971 yards with six touchdowns and the big touchdown catch in the Super Bowl itself, courtesy of a Philly special. The city of Philadelphia prides itself on succeeding when counted out. The Eagles showed that. That's what it means. They take number two on my list. That leaves number one, and I'm sure this is where Yankee fans are going to want to turn off the tube. My top spot goes to the 
Boston Red Sox on March 31st, the third day of the 2018 regular season. The Boston Red Sox moved into first place in the American League East, a position they occupied almost exclusively from that point on. By May, it was clear they were the best team in baseball. After 119 wins between the regular season and the playoffs, they remained unmatched. The Red Sox completed the seven month marathon by cementing their status atop the sport and among the greatest teams of all time, riding the left arm of David Price and the powerful swings of Steve Pierce. The Red Sox easily dispatched the LA Dodgers 5-1 and game five to cap a dominant season and claim the 2018 World Series title. It was Boston's first championship since 2013 and fourth in 15 seasons. Our Bronxnet cameras captured some of the action in the fall classic. Here's a look back at game one, which set the tone for the rest of the series. We were dictating their their their, their moves, but um, we we feel that we got a few guys that they can hit lefties and righties. Um, Steve Pierce, for example, um, you know, they brought it, uh, a righty for him, and you know, we've been using Steve throughout the postseason against lefties and righties. So we stay with him. Um, you know, we feel like Rafi can hit lefties and righties. So. I know they're going to go to that. <clears throat> they trust their bullpen and their matchups, but we trust our guys too. And uh, you just have to be patient. You have to be patient. You know, we're talking early today. He's playing me. What's the situation? He told me left hander hitting good against Kepler. And how about I be prepared? Seven, eight in late in the game. If they bring lefty for Dever. So that was the plan. And we did it. Had anyone let you know that you were the third Red Sox player with four hits in a World Series game? No. What do you think of that? Um, I don't really care, honestly. <laughs> I'm just glad we won. Um, you know, it starts with guys around you. I think you get on base, putting more pressure on, on the pitcher. And you, know, you got guys like you know, Steve Pearson and JD behind, <clears throat> behind me. It makes my job a little more easy. All of this is up for debate, of course. I'm sure there are some at home questioning my list. Where's LeBron to the Lakers? Where are the Golden State Warriors? Chime in on social media. Hit me up at The Voice Bobby C. And give me your top 10. Those are your top 10 sports stories of 2018. I'm Bobby C. See you in 2019.